and it's, uh, it's great to know that Brother Carter and Brother Glue got their moose. And uh, we were praying for them, and so that's great. And it was a long way off, and they got their moose. That's good. I heard this little joke. I think I'll tell it to you. There was a, a lawyer and a, a doctor and a preacher. And they went out hunting, and they all saw this big buck, and they all fired at the same time. And they ran over, and the doctor said, only one hit it. The lawyer said, I think I hit it. So the doctor looked down, and you get down, saw the opening, the bullet hole. He said, no. He said, it wasn't you, and it wasn't me. It was a preacher. And the lawyer said, how do you know? It went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> so anyway, and uh, the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. So we need to have a hearing ear today. Amen. Praise God to uh, hear the word of God. And laying all uh, foolishness aside, now we'll get into the word of God. I lived in Centerville, and uh, there was a hay field right across from where we lived. And, of course, uh, it was time for them to cut the hay. I knew there was a little nest there, and uh, there was a mother duck, and she had her eggs there. But the man who came to cut the hay didn't know. And so I ran out and I told him about it. We thought moving it would be a terrible thing because perhaps she'd abandoned the nest. So he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be careful. He cut all the hay and did the harvesting of the hay and everything and left that little clump. She sat there until they hatched and then took them away. And I thought, oh, the nature that God put in that mother uh, duck. And I'm reminded of another little story. Some of these little things intrigue me. Out west in the prairie, in a certain section, there was a fire went by, and there was uh, a prairie hen they discovered, all charred. And as they went over to see her, touching her, she fell over. Under her wings and breast was all of her little brood. And I thought the nature of God placed Yes, and the wrath of God poured out upon sin, and you and I find safety. I told you those little stories to bring you to my topic this morning, a place of protection, a place of protection. And I'm filling, amen, big shoes today, Brother Carter's shoes, and God bless him. And I appreciate being asked to speak to you. I'd like to draw your attention to Psalms chapter 91. And also Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 through to verse 4. And shall we stand? I know you've been standing quite a bit, but I'll ask you to stand again as we read the word of the Lord. <clears throat> in Psalms 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Let's come to the New Testament and this dispensation of the grace of God and find out where we are in Colossians chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, and not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid. Shall we say hid? With Christ in God, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Our text, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God, when Christ who is our life. Amen. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God. We pray your divine blessing and inspiration today as we minister to your precious people. In Jesus' name, amen. 
God has provided in himself a place of protection for each of us. We are hid. The Bible says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. We have come into that secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Praise God. One of the classic games of childhood is hide and seek. And uh, I have two granddaughters, six and three, and they love to play hide and go seek. One is Amazing Grace. So the other one said, well, if they're going to call her amazing, I'm going to have to come up with something too. Magnificent Georgia. So when we go to their place in Fredericton, you're not there very long until they want to play hide and go seek. When they come to visit us in Hampton, they're not there very long until they want to play hide and go seek. My son's girls, they never did seem to want to play hide and go seek, but these girls, they want to play hide and go seek all the time. Now, perhaps it's been a long time since you played hide and go seek, but I played hide and go seek not too long ago. <laughs> One person, the seeker is it, and has to close his or her eyes and count while the other uh, player finds that secret place in which to hide. My oldest granddaughter, she counts in French. She kind of embarrasses me because I, I can't count as high as she can in French, sad to say. But hiders look carefully for a place to hide where they cannot be found. The most exciting thing about it is to find a place where you can hide and see, you can see the person who's looking for you, and they can't see you, but you can see them. And uh, much of the thrill of playing the game is that, finding that secret place. It allows you, you know, to hide and remain there undetected by the seeker. And best hiders, they take great delight in finding a place. Where are you going to hide? Behind the curtain in the bathroom, <laughs> in the closet, all these different places. It allows them to see the seeker. But, uh, you know, they're so well hidden, amen, that nobody sees them. Well, let me tell you, brother and sister, one of the greatest things about being a Christian is the feeling of the assurance of being able to live in a secret place of safety hidden, praise God, in the protective presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're both able, thank God, to aim and hide from the onslaughts of the enemy, and then we can dwell in that hiding place, praise God, for a lifetime. That gives me so much assurance, praise God. I was reading the story. It's true, the story. Centuries ago, there was a Christian who was fleeing from his Muslim enemies. This was during a persecution in the time of North Africa. And pursued over a hill and through the valley with no place to hide. And being exhausted, he collapsed exhausted into a cave, waiting for his death. And, of course, his pursuers behind him, minutes behind him expecting to die, expecting to be caught. Well, he looked, and here was a spider, and that spider was weaving a web. And within minutes, that spider had woven a web across the entrance of the cave. When his pursuers arrived, and they saw that web, they said there's just no possible way that he could have entered into the cave here. And later, that believer, he said this, where God is, a spider's web is like a wall. Where God is not, a wall is like a spider's web. Brother and sister, we have, thank God, assurance that we are under the protection, amen, of the Lord. Verse 2 of Psalms 91 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Praise God. Thank God for our experience in salvation. To abide under the shadow of the Almighty means experiencing Him in salvation and also living with God in such a way that His presence is like a covering of safety, praise God, and protection. Praise the name of the Lord. Although He suffered, amen, for you and I, amen, wrath against sin, amen, thank God. You and I, thank God, His brood 
Amen. Thank God. His, his children. Amen. The people of his care. We are protected. Thank God. A place, amen, of protection. Praise God. They came to my door recently here and wanted to sell me a security device. I'm not going to tell you if I have one or not. <laughs> but in our times, people are very conscious of, uh, right here in North America, they spend billions of dollars on security devices and uh, services to protect their lives and their personal property. And in some urban areas, they have turned their homes into fortresses. Large, great big walls and bars over the windows, bars over the doors and uh, alarm systems and things like that. Quite elaborate systems, really. And uh, you can have it go right into the police station and and, or to the fire station and things of that nature. My brother-in-law has one of those. And, uh, but I don't have one of those. But anyway, I'll just tell you that. But I'll tell you, yeah, people are concerned about their safety. I went to a home here some time ago and said, look, and I got up last night in the middle of the night and somebody was going with my rotor tiller. I went to another home and a guy said, you know what happened here? I come in from the country and all my silver's gone. Well, people are concerned about their safety, their security. And they have all these here, uh, you know, security devices in their home. But a Christian security is not based upon guard dogs like Rottweilers or pit bulls or guns, but on realizing the safety, thank God, hallelujah, amen, the protection that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. Thank you, wonderful Lord, hallelujah. There is divine overshadowing. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 2, praise God, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and the covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadows of a great rock in a weary land, thank God. We have divine overshadowing, praise God. Thank God for protection, praise God. Amen. I always thank God, amen, for the privilege, thank God, of knowing, thank God, that he is protecting me. Our topic is a place, amen, of protection. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God. A lot of stories I have here this morning reading some things. Years ago, there was a submarine that was being tested. It had to be submerged for quite a period of time. And uh, the next morning, uh, there was a man who asked the captain. He said, uh, how did you endure the terrible storm last night? So the officer looked at the man and said, storm? He said, we didn't even know there, there was a storm last night. And so the sub had been so far down beneath the surface that it had reached to what sailors call the cushion of the sea. The cushion of the sea. Although the ocean on top is whirling and swirling, huge waves, high winds, right down there the water below is still. And so they had been in that place. And that's just an example, brother and sister, of God providing for us a cushion. Amen. A place of refuge. I'd like to encourage you, and I said when I came here, I want to bring a message of encouragement, praise God. I can encourage myself and encourage you. I point a finger out to encourage you, and three come back to encourage me. But I'm so thankful, praise God, that God has provided us a cushion, praise God. Amen. A place of refuge, praise the name of the Lord. We have a mind, and our mind is subjected to a lot of worry and frustration. A Christian's mind will be protected, amen, against the waves of worry if it is resting completely in the blood, amen, the finished work of Jesus Christ, amen, on Calvary, praise God. And they're sheltered by His grace and encouraged by His Holy Spirit, praise God. We can find that perfect, amen, tranquility that only Jesus Christ can provide. Thank God. While other people are worried and they're in fret, Haman, you and I have discovered the cushion, the place of refuge in Jesus Christ, the power of his grace. Back in the Old Testament, there were six cities of refuge where a person could flee, and they did. It was for their, for their safety. Accidentally, they had killed another, and they were being pursued. These cities were scattered in strategic places throughout the land of Israel, Palestine, and that provided them asylum. 
where the fugitive, of course, could find shelter and he could be protected. And he was there. And the life of the priest secured this. And if he was uh, innocent, of course, he could remain there without fear, without harm, or from the, re the uh, revenge of the dead man's relative. We won't turn to all these verses, but you can find that in Joshua chapter 20 and verse 2 through to verse 6. He was protected. Now, that was a reality for them, but it was a type for you and I, and it pointed to something else. Amen. Long ago, God Almighty established this, amen, in the land of Palestine. But now in this dispensation of the grace of God, he has provided himself, I say himself, praise God, as the secret place, the hiding place, the secure place, praise God. Amen. Thank God. The only source, amen, of safety, praise God. In Psalms 119 and verse 114, amen, the psalmist said, Thou art my hiding place. Thou art my hiding place, praise God. He provided himself in this dispensation of grace. God provides himself, amen, as a hiding place. And my shield, amen, I hope in thy word. Praise the name of the Lord, thank God. Amen, hallelujah. You know, it's a wonderful thing. Years ago, we used to sing under the blood, the precious blood, under the cleansing, healing flood, praise God. And thank God we, amen, have come under the blood. Praise the name of the Lord. And we have found a hiding place. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in the Amplified Version here of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, You have died and you, your new life is hid with Christ in God. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, what a wonderful revelation. I'm going to get into some doctrine right here, but where was, where was God when Jesus was here on the earth? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19, To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God was in Christ. Praise God. That's where he was. Amen. The fullness of the God had bodily dwelt. Amen. In Jesus Christ. God manifested incarnate. Amen. In the flesh. Praise God. Amen. We have experienced repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. Amen. And receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Where are you, amen, as a New Testament believer, praise God, who has experienced, amen, New Testament salvation? I'll tell you where you are. You're in the safe place. You are in, amen, God. You are in, thank God, that safe place, the hiding place, praise God. You have died, and your new life is, is the life of Christ. It's Colossians 3 and 4, Christ who is our life, praise God. And so you have died, but your new life is hid with Christ in God. Praise the name of the Lord. You talk about a hiding place. And that's a revelation to every one of us, praise God. It is identification. We have identified ourselves, thank God, amen, in repentance, amen, in burial and resurrection. Amen. We have taken on, amen, the identity, amen, of Christ. And uh, we have put ourselves, amen, under the blood under the blood of Jesus Christ. Years ago in Egypt, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It was protection. The death angel could not touch, amen, the firstborn because of that blood. Amen. You and I are protected, amen, in the hiding place. Christ is the hiding place, praise God. We are the body of Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, amen, verse 27. For ye are the body of Christ, praise God. Hallelujah. And we abide. Our obligation is to abide in the vine, praise God. We receive strength as we abide, amen. We are the branch and we abide in the vine, praise God. We have that protection, amen. Paul realized the revelation. Here's what he said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, he said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I, but Christ. He associated his new life with Christ. He was hid in Christ. His new life was hid in Christ. But not I, but Christ liveth. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the Son of God. Amen. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Adam, amen. I'll tell you where this game of hide and go seek started. It started with Adam way back in Genesis chapter 3. And Adam hid himself. And, and yet he couldn't find a suitable place to hide. Oh, he realized that he had done wrong. But he couldn't find a place to hide. And we always look and say, well, God provided the covering. He did. But I'll tell you something else he provided. He provided, amen, for Adam, thank God, a proper hiding place. 
Oh, praise God. Amen. He provided that place. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I heard, uh, amen, uh, Brother Robertson preaching here some time ago about how they took stones, amen, from uh, the old wilderness, put it in the center, stones, amen. They took those stones and put them in the new land. But really what happened is the water was cut off. But yet, if you look in the scripture, the water went all the way back, amen, to the city of Adam. And that's how thorough the finished work of Calvary is, praise God. It's got to be that way. Not one sin can enter into heaven. It will topple, amen, uh, the throne of God. And so, amen, the finished work of Calvary provided, amen, not only a hiding place, amen, for Adam, praise God, but provided you and I, thank God, a hiding place. Praise the name of the Lord, thank God. Oh, hallelujah, amen, to be covered by the blood. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, that atonement means covering, bitchmen, and that uh, ark was covered, amen, with bitchmen, within and without, praise God. Perfect protection, praise God, from the storm. Praise the name of the Lord. And those that came there to those cities of refuge, they were protected, amen, by the life of the high priest. Praise God. According to the sonship of Jesus Christ, amen. What is Jesus Christ doing now? In Hebrews chapter 7 and verse uh, 25, of saving grace that he has, amen, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Praise God. We say, amen, we plead the blood. Actually, it is Jesus Christ that pleads the blood on our behalf, praise God. Amen, our protection, thank God, is in the name of the Lord. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and they are safe. In Proverbs 18 and, uh, amen, verse 10. Praise the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord, thank God. That's why we plead the name of Jesus Christ, praise God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We have entered into that name. Thank God for the day that we took upon ourselves the wonderful name of Jesus Christ in water baptism, praise God. I believe it's so important, amen, I believe it's one of those things, amen, that God has ordained, amen, to bring new life, to raise, to walk in newness of life. And Paul said, now I'm crucified, amen, but I live, but not I, but Christ. You need to identify yourself. You need to identify yourself. Who you are in Christ is marvelous. Oh, thank God. Not only are you in a place of protection, but I have the personal belief that when we come through the pearly gate, we're coming through as Jesus Christ because we're a part of the body of Christ. We are Christ. We're hid in Christ. I have that belief that when I come through the pearly gate, I'm not coming through as Albert Galbraith. Amen. I'm looked upon as Christ. That's my new life. I'm hid with Christ in God. So be it. You can think about that. Amen. A place of protection, praise God. Amen. Thank God. A secret place. Amen. God is our protector. God is our protector, praise God. And uh, he promises that he's going to protect us. And the way in which he does it is amazing. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse uh, 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation, that's protection, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This is amazing. Take the helmet of salvation. The word take in this verse means to accept. It speaks of us receiving from God something that he has prepared for us, something that we could never do for ourselves. That's grace. That's grace, praise God. God ordained that we be protected, thank God, by the salvation that he alone, amen, has provided, praise God. And so Paul associated, amen, salvation with the protection of our head. The helmet of salvation. Now, housed within our head is our human brain. It's the center of bodily functions, activities. We must protect our head for survival. As a Christian, we must protect our head for survival and salvation. I've been listening quite a bit about uh, being mandatory that uh, in sports now they wear helmets, even skiing, because of concussions. A lot of lawsuits. Noticing a book by the name. And this. 
It's a physicist's discovery. And he says when a 240-pound football lineman collides, uh, that can run, rather, 100 yards in 11 seconds, that's fast, when he collides with a 240 running back, the energy is enough to move 66,000 pounds or 33 tons one inch. Oh, uh, the collision would give that player his helmet a blow 1,000 times the force of gravity. You know, football helmets, helmets are very important to withstand tremendous blows. Otherwise, they wouldn't survive very long. That's why there's a lot of lawsuits and things of that nature. They wouldn't survive very long. The same is true with us believers. We are engaged in spiritual warfare. We have got to have the certainty of our salvation. We've got to have a no-so experience, praise God. We are at war against sin, the devil, and the flesh. And there are many things, of course, at war against us. Romans chapter 8, verse 36 to verse 39 tells us uh, some of these things that would separate a lot of people. But here are some things that are mentioned right here in Romans chapter 8. As it is written, verse 36, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep before the shears, the slaughter rather. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Alexander the Great, a conqueror, the Bible says we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. It says, for I am persuaded. You've got to be persuaded that neither uh, death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God. Nothing, absolutely nothing, praise God, can separate us, amen, and God's people from His loving care. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 And so this creates in us a place of trust, praise God. A place of trust. If we worry, we cannot trust. If we trust, we cannot worry. In Isaiah 12 and 2, one of my favorite verses, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. You know you can go to heaven first class or second class. I've never flown first class. I'd like to... In the natural. It's always been second class. One time I got on a plane, and it was, of course, March break, and they got us on there, and, oh, boy. It was full, and a lot of children going to Florida. So we sat there a long time, and I looked at my wife, and I was by the window and looking out the wing. I said, this plane's not going to go anywhere. They couldn't even get the thing to start. So anyway... After all, the children were crying and fussing. They took us off, and we went in, and we sat for another, I don't know how long it was, a long time. After a while, a while they brought another one of those crippling, ailing, amen, airplanes in and put it on us, put, that, put us on it. <laughs> anyway, so we took off, amen, and the children, amen, they weren't rested up very much at all, amen. So uh, first class is the way to go. First class is the way to go, amen. So... You can go first class, you can go second class. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. First class is, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Second class is, when I am afraid, I will trust in thee. You're going to go second class when I'm afraid, I'll trust in thee. It's better to go first class. I will trust and not be afraid. Praise the name of the Lord. Worry. We all deal with worry. Show of hands? No. Oh, a few. How many more? Anybody else? You ever worry? You ever worry? You ever fret? No. Nobody here. Amen. Worry's like fog. Us folk in St. John know quite a bit about fog. I was born and brought up down here in Laurelville. I won't tell you the Indian name of Laurelville, but anyway... That's where I was born and brought up in the fog. 
Whenever I see somebody from down there, I, I'll say, yeah, I was born, hatched, brought up in the fog. And they anyway, born and brought up in the fog. Somebody said, yeah, I know you were. <laughs> anyway, so I said, I don't want to live back there when I retire. So I got up above the fog belt. I got up above the fog belt. But we all battle with worry. Is that so? Is that true? Is that true? Worry is like fog. Now, according to the National Bureau of Standards of the dense fog covering seven city blocks to a depth of 100 feet, it is comprised of less than one glass of water. One glass. One glass of water. Can you imagine? Less than one glass of water. Worry like fog amounts to very little in reality, it only makes sense to trust in the protective presence, amen, of our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Revelation chapter 6, the sixth seal is opened. Great earthquake. Mountains are being removed. Islands disappearing. We find the kings, the mighty men, the rich and the poor, going to the dens and the mountains, saying, fall upon us and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. It's like the old guy out in Durham Bridge. We used to go out there, and he used to have a favorite song, No Hiding Place Down Here. There's no hiding place down here. But, brother and sister, there is hiding in Jesus Christ, praise God, which puts us, amen, in a heavenly position. Amen. We have been raised, amen, thank God, and elevated, and we sit, amen, with Christ in heavenly places, praise God. Thank God, far above all principalities and powers. Amen. And all things are put under our feet. Amen. To the church, praise God. Thank God, hallelujah, for our safety. Praise the name of the Lord. We have safety in Jesus, a place of refuge, protection. Amen. Thank God. From the true rock, the true rock of ages, the rock of ages. They were crying for the rocks to fall upon them. But, brother and sister, we have the protection, amen, of the true rock. Amen, of ages. Amen, praise God. The psalmist said here in Psalms chapter 32 and verse 7, Praise God, thou art my hiding place. You are. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Oh, thank God. Oh, deliverance. Praise the name of the Lord. Wonderful protection, praise God. I mentioned some time ago in preaching here about the Niagara Falls on the American side, 160 feet there. People go to the Cave of the Winds. All that heavy crushing, amen, weight of water would crush a person to death. But those people are secure because of the rock overhead. And you and I are secure because of Jesus Christ, amen, the rock of ages. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, the blessing of the secret place. Amen. I'm going to close, amen, right soon here. In this here secret place, we have God's love. We have God's love. It's like I heard Brother Urshan preaching one time, and he was talking about the daddy who read a little story to his little daughter and said, now you go to sleep. She said, oh, daddy, I'm afraid. Well, he said, you don't have to be afraid because the angels are with you. And he read Psalms 91 verse 11. And you don't have to be afraid because Jesus is right here with you. And uh, Brother Urshan said, but the little girl said, right now, Daddy, I want somebody with skin on, somebody with flesh and bone, amen, to be here and protect me and love me. Ah, oh, brother and sister, God showed his great love by coming, amen, to us himself in the Lord Jesus Christ. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. I read the story of a man in Wales. This man in Wales wanted to win the affection of this young lady. And of course, this went on for some 40 years. Can you imagine? 40 years before she finally said yes. 
They were both 74 years old. 1997, they got married. This here persistent shy man, he slipped a weekly love letter under her door. 2,184 love letters with no spoken or no written response. Finally, the shy man mustered up enough nerve and summoned up enough courage to present himself at the door. And knocking at the door, the shy man said, I've wrote so many letters, but now I've come. And I'm asking your hand in marriage after 40 years. This is a true story. 2,184 love letters. And she said yes. And they got married in 1997. Well, bless your heart. Time and time again, a loving God sent letter after letter through the prophets, through the leaders. Finally, God came, wrapped, thank God, in love, in his son. Amen. God gave his life a ransom. Amen. He gave his life a ransom, praise God, on the cross. Amen. We know John 3.16. But what about 1 John 3.16? 1 John 3.16, amen, describes it all, how he came in his son. Thank God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. The love of God. He came in his son. He came in the flesh. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Oh, praise God. He gave us a perfect protection, a perfect hiding place. Then we need to realize, amen, praise God. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. He loved us so much. Praise God. He came. We are protected. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when they pushed aside that little prairie hen, they heard the chirping of little chicks protected by their mother. God provided through Calvary a wonderful Praise God. Oh, I wanted to encourage you this morning. I hope that this message has encouraged you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.